Hey guys, so sorry about it starting just a smidge late here. I was trying to fix my link. <laughs> Welcome! This is going to be a month of cozy fun art from the 30 cozy designs that we did just recently. And uh, let's get started. <laughs> Good morning. Welcome to Deliberately Creative. I'm Stephanie. This is going to be fun and cozy. I have my cozy quilt. I've got my my cup of coffee. I am all excited to do these fun drawings. I really want to focus on just easing into watercolor, colored pencil, pen and ink, um, markers, whatever makes me happy on that day is what I'm going to do. Today is going to be watercolor because I'm still really drilled into that. And welcome, welcome to everyone coming in. Thank you. This is going to be a lot of fun. I am using, this is actually the original art that I'm drawing on today. It was drawn on the Hannibal Bamboo Mixed Media Paper. Uh, this is a sample sheet. The actual piece that I uh, drew on was cut down from no it wasn't up there it was down here uh, it was cut down from a large uh, 12 and a half by nine and a half or nine and three quarters sheet of paper the I like this it's mixed media paper so it should take the water pretty well it should take yeah it should do it it should welcome guys thank you I just realized that I did not bring an actual paper napkin in here. Hey, Mark, could you grab me a paper napkin, please? Thank you. I'm going to bring up the reference so that you guys can see what we're working on. I'm working on this mug. It's uh, got kind of a corally peach pink color on a lovely wooden background wood table it's actually very similar to my wood table hey, go ahead and just squeak there we go ah oh, there we go. thank you it's very similar to the pine wood table that i have in my kitchen there's a little ipad and a book i'm going to say that book is probably a blank journal and it's ready for somebody to start doing some detail on let's get going i'm putting in I'm going to put in this really dark background up here at the top. Uh, so I've had a couple questions about why some of the images in the little book are cut off. And it's because of how they were drawn on the paper. I ran off the edges of my paper. And so when they were put into the book, that's the 30 cozy creative designs. The link is uh, in the in the chat and down below in the more information box. It's on Teespring, it's an instant download and it's from our 14 hour, <laughs> yeah, 14 hour live stream that YouTube only archived 12 hours of. So I had to upload the last six episodes or last six designs yeah, that was, that was real fun to find out the next morning. I didn't know. It was my own fault. I should have known. But you know what? It's not a big deal now. We've got all the designs are up. They are all time stamped. And after the show, I will get both of the designs, uh, both of the videos into the iCard for this show. I'm just getting the background wet. So I figured I could talk about stuff while I was getting the background wet, right? right? Now I do want to make sure that I get it up to the edge, but I'm not going in. This one is going to be watercolor and it's going to be with my, basically my cheap watercolor pad palette here. This is the fan palette. It is in my Amazon affiliate store. I... I'm going to just say that this top part here really is very dark. 
So I'm just going to grab some brown, some of the kind of sepia brown and the sienna brown, and then some, I want to get a bunch of it mixed up, and then some of the Prussian blue, or what I'm calling Prussian blue that's on this. Sorry, tap, tap, tap. Just to make that dark. It's just after 4 a.m. this morning. Oh, wow, Sue. Yeah, well, it's for your, your 4 a.m. Tuesday morning. So, those time travelers. I love my time travelers. People who are way ahead of me <laughs> in time. So, I am... I'm grabbing the Prussian blue and some of that sepia brown and the sienna brown and getting them mixed together. And I see that there's some shadow coming off of that right there. I'm going to go ahead and just start putting some of these shadows in. It's shadowed pretty much inside the handle. And then coming from the cup. And by putting the shadows in on this wet paper, it will soften and blend, blur out. There's a shadow right under the edge. And since I am using these brown tones that I am that I'm going to use to make the desk or the the, the tabletop, there's a little bit of a shadow coming forward. I can have those indications in right away. Hello, hello. So we're doing this to be cozy, to be comforting, and to, you know, really help our, our what do I want to say? The, the self-care, self-care of January, the getting in here, doing our self-care, making sure that we're filling our wells because I need, you know, I need to fill that creative well just like you do. So that's good up there. That's good down here. I'm going to grab some yellow ochre now, get that nice and wet. I'm going to use yellow ochre. See, and I'm just, I'm, I'm not worried if I touch that shadow. Actually, I might go right over that shadow. See if I can get it to blur out just a little bit. I don't usually work on things this big. So part of my challenge is I'm actually working on paper that is bigger than I normally do. I mean, it's not huge, but it is bigger. <laughs> and yeah, working on self-care, working on making sure that filling that well of creativity, do things that make you happy, but don't worry if it doesn't turn out perfectly the first time. Ah, thank you, Ruth. I'm so glad that you're enjoying the video. Yeah, you know, this nice whipped cream on on the uh, top of that that cup this could be cocoa this could be it could be just about anything except tea I, I probably would not put whipped cream on top of tea just grabbing some more of that yellow ochre to put in here um, I am going to try and stay away from the that edge for just a minute because this is the edge of the table and it's not blurry. I am using a big brush. This is the Simply Simmons number one flat wash brush. It's a one inch. Not number one. It's one inch. They don't have numbers on these. Except for the size. I am going to be doing a second live stream tonight. It's going to be at... Oh, there's a hair right there. Sorry. Come on, work your way. There's a little piece of hair right here, so I'm trying to get it off there. There we go. 
I have no animals. The only thing dropping hair all over the place is me. It's chai, it's coffee, it's cocoa, it's whatever people want it to be. I like that. Oops. So I dropped some water down right there. I need to be careful. Maybe put my water over to the side so I don't drip across my painting. And I just dropped another hair. Wow. I have very long hair, and so sometimes it drops into places. I'm going to try and grab I'm going to try and make kind of a blurred out version of some wood grain. And then we can go back in and make it more detailed later but I just want some of the shadows of the wood grain kind of coming through. It's not planks. This is going to be wood grain. So there will be more detail. But first I just want to get the paper all done in. I reserve the right to use my book and print onto other kinds of paper during the month. So if I decide that doing, I want to do a watercolor, but the watercolor is not, you know, I'm maybe I'm making it too dark or too heavy with water. This is really heavy with water. So this is giving this paper a test. Um, it's not super sized. I am pushing it pretty hard here because this is the Hannah Mule mixed media paper. It's not their their watercolor paper. I do have some of the uh, 300 GSM watercolor paper. This is 265 mixed media, GSM mixed media paper. All right. So I need to dry this. I like the shadow that's going on down here. That's softened up. I am going to well, this is, this is dry a bit back there. I think I'm going to take some of that dark shadowy tone again and say, I see that there's kind of a table back here. You can add things to your paintings just because you don't put a lot of detail in the drawing doesn't mean you can't add something back in. And then that's coming across on an angle like that. Ah, look at that. I just put a table in. I'm going to say that the legs are actually going to come all the way down and hide in here. So maybe I'll make that tabletop even wider. I'm not going to put the bucket that's in that. It looks like there's a plastic bin or something like that under the table. I'm not going to worry about that. Need to make that leg a little thicker so it looks like it's more forward. And this is just a loose representation. What type of printer? So when I am printing, I have the... Uh, I have a Canon... TS 925. It is a Pixima printer. And when I did the painting, hey, honey, sorry, I'm going to call for the honey. Honey, can you bring me the uh, painting of the, the bunny slippers, please? So when I did the painting of the bunny slippers, I did not paint on the original design. I printed it out on my printer and I used the draft mode to print it. And I'm really happy to say that the ink on that printer did not bleed on the, it, and it was, I printed on the Arteza, um, just the Arteza premium paper. So it wasn't even printed on cotton paper. It was printed on their, um, it's on the, on the wall. 
<laughs> he didn't know where it was. There we go. See, now we've got the table in the background here. Whoops, I just went all wobbly. It was looking really, really, really straight. There we go. That's the front edge of the table. So all of the black that you see on here is actually from the printer. So, and I got this nice and wet. And I printed it on a piece of um, eight and a half by 11. So I just cut the, I just cut my paper down to fit a standard sheet size. And then I, I taped it off and then painted right around it. I could have taped it off even bigger and just made my background larger. But that's what I used for the cover of the book. So this, and this was printed off on the Canon, Canon Pixima 952 one. Or the, or the 9520. Uh, it actually will go up to a larger size piece of paper. It'll go up to, I believe it's 11 by 13. Actually, it'll go up 13 inches wide by however long I want it to be. Pretty cool. But that was, and that was just painted with the cheap paints too. Pretty fun, huh? There we go. So I hope that answered that. I will list that information in the information box below. I need to dry this. Isn't that looking cozy already though? We've got that indication of that those slight shadows that are in there that start making you think of the uh, grain in the wood. You know, I might just keep it soft and out of focus in the background like that. What do you think, guys? Soft and out of focus? It feels a little more cozy. I'm just drying this so that when I move on to the next thing, it's not going to be too buckled. This paper is buckling some. I put a ton of water on it. It's, it was, it's not made to do that much water, but you know what? We'll just be, we'll just be a little bit adventurous. We're with our cozy painting here. We're just trying new things too. There's going to be gouache painting. There's going to be some of our paintings I think are going to be, uh, painted in very, very simply. Some are going to have more detail. And who knows, I might even make Mark really happy and do a little pen work on that cover of that little book. Maybe do a little uh, doodle. He wants me, he wants more doodles. So, and I'm just pushing the tape down. I really want this to be dry though. So that's why I'm going for so long and the paper is flattening out. So that's nice. Yeah, I think staying with the soft, out of focus, we're pretty much done with the background. We're going to move on to the cup and the iPad. Now the iPad, if we look at that, I think, I think maybe, hmm, I'm, I'm trying to think how I want to do this. I think maybe we'll do the cup and then we'll work on the iPad because the iPad actually has that sort of pink gold color to it that kind of goes along with that pink color that's in the, in the cup. So now, see, I put down a really scary, scary red color there, didn't I? It's okay, because now I'm going to go and grab, first I'm gonna grab a touch of, let's see, maybe a little touch of some bright green. Let's try that. First, I want to dull it down just a bit and that bright green look, just that touch of bright green in it, just brought it down. Now I'm going to take just a touch of magenta into it because I want it to be a little bit cooler. Maybe, maybe a touch of orange. 
you don't want to get too many colors there that's that looks really good that looks like I can go in and use that for the shadowy bit maybe I'll even take a little bit of some brown and some burgundy into that There, see, by drying the paper, whoops, that went too dark, too, too quick right there. Go like this. You can lift out your highlight. See what I did? I just lifted that out so I don't have to worry about don't have to worry about this cup is going to be it's not being color matched to the reference it's just giving me an idea of the color but that is going to be our darkest tone so I'm going to put a little more of that burgundy ish color there and there and Katie so you bought your luggage you guys are working your way towards getting out here on the west coast that's so cool Let's see. Yeah, see, if you look at the that reference there, the top of the handle is actually really dark. The bottom of the handle has got some color to it and it's got some reflection. I'm going to put this color on here. It's lighter. I'm going to let the color the the shadow kind of flow out a little bit. I'm just looking at it. I'm looking at my reference. Look at that reference and see what you see. I know that there's a really bright edge right out at the very front. So I'm going to use my on uh, my wet brush on dry paper. There's sort of a reflection in the middle and it starts getting darker as it comes around. Don't don't worry about making it perfect. But see how we've got that softer pink color going in now? There we go. This paper does not like to be rubbed on back and forth very much. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to get my color on, but not rub too much. And I am, my, my handle is thicker than the handle on the, the reference. So I'm just going to paint it so it looks like it's got some reflection, but not, it's not as thin. So there's more color on the handle. This, so I think that this paper is going to be really good for going in and doodling on Oh wow, I like the effect there. I think it needs to be a little bit darker under the handle area here. Coming forward. There's some random weird little reflections here and there. I like that. I like that a lot. It needs to be a bit darker at the base. Adding some more of that burgundy into that color. So down here at the base, back in the shadow. We've got a bit more. There's a bit more shadowy color right here. I'm just sort of looking around and going, hmm, let's see, what does that do? There's a little bit of a shadow under that's a little bit stronger. And now what I want to do is go ahead and get that shadow just a little bit wet. So, like I was saying, I reserve the right to print out onto uh, other, other papers so we can test things. Just because I stuck with one paper all last month doesn't mean I have to do that this month. And I can see, yeah, when I'm doing colored pencil, this is going to be awesome. When I'm doing just a tiny touch of color, I think that this is going to be perfectly fine to work right on the originals but 
I'm feeling that this paper is a little soft for doing too much water like I'm doing here. That I'm doing a lot of water. I want to make that just a wee bit darker. A little bit more right on right up here. I want to get a little bit darker. So I'll be using the 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 downloadable quite a bit. I'm going to put a little bit more darker color down in here. It's a little light, so I want that bump up the high uh, contrast. Bump up your contrast. Don't be afraid to do that. Remember, watercolor does dry lighter. I'm still working into some of my wet area here, letting it flow around. And then I'm going to say there's a little bit of a darker. Now I'm the paper is pretty dry out here on the front edge because I didn't get it really wet. Hello, poor choices. And that's poor as in to pour something out. What's your name? So that way we can, we can greet you, greet you with your, your name. And thank you so much for joining. If you are new here, make sure and click that like button, subscribe to the channel, share the video with your friends. And if you are interested in the book, I'm going to stand up and grab something and I will be, we'll just let that dry right there. While that's drying, show you. Now this is, this is directly from the download. I printed it out. It, when you print, it prints as a an eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper. So when you print, you've got designs facing the same direction on both both pages. But uh, so this is this is where we started, and this is where we are so far. And that's the reference. Ooh, look at that. Isn't that a good way to, to show that up? Not too bad, huh? Not too bad. 30 designs were drawn in a 14 hour live stream here on YouTube. If you are interested, I will be linking all of the videos. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. So I'm going to use some of that darker pinky purpley color. It's kind of the rose gold color that's going on the on that iPad or tablet. May not be an iPad, might be just just a tablet. I'm gonna say it kind of matches. I'm going to I kind of gave it a harder edge that's more like the the new versions. But I gave it a wider bezel here, so it's kind of like the old versions. <laughs> You know, make it however it makes you happy. I'm just going to say this one has a pink, pink edge. It's magic. Oh, you missed, you missed doing, uh, missed because you were doing the laundry. Ah. Zoom back in. And let's see. Let's see if I got that side camera. Yeah, see, the side camera is a little darker today. But that gives you another re another angle on it, another reference point. And I am painting in in a very doodly type of fashion. The or, you know, very loose and doodly. I'm going to take some of that shadowy background color, I think. My brush, I still had some of that pink in it. Might be getting some reflections. I'm going to use that 
I'm going to say this iPad or tablet is turned off, so it's got a dark screen. And it's not reflecting much light. So we're just going to say it's dark. And I will drop in some even darker color, but this gets me started. And it's going to lighten up a little bit as we come around. But right up under the edge of that book, the little sketchbook, I'm going to say, you know, self-care, sketchbook, journal, maybe it's somebody's bullet journal or um, dot journal type book. So there we go. Just I'm pushing a little bit more of that shadow right under the edge. I will bring in a harder line of dark color there. But for now, we're just getting the screen in. You see a bit of the screen down here. Or no, that's the book. Ah, that's okay. The book is going to get some shadow too. Or no, that is the screen. That's the screen. The book goes up. See, sometimes you get lost. Yeah, that's the screen. My my book is twisted just a little bit from the from the uh, original reference. I wasn't being a slave to the reference. I was making it mostly this reference now is just for my color. Looking fabulous. Excellent. Nice and cozy. I mean, don't you just want to sit down at this table with that nice cup of whipped cream topped hot drink your journal maybe your ipad to get references to draw things i do that all the time i i'm working on setting up my studio better i should probably take a quick video of what my studio looks like right now and then work on the um i want to make a desk yeah, i'm gonna i'm gonna come to the wide view here so directly behind me is a green screen and directly behind that I have a whole bunch of a whole bunch of stuff. There's a window back there also. And because that window is there, it faces the east. So I would get morning light and there's a huge front porch roof over the window. So I would get diffused light the rest of the day. So it almost would be like a north facing window, diffused light. And over to the side of me here, I have a north facing window. So I, I want to get to the point where I have this opened up around my work desk so I can have a window that I can look out. And right now it's covered. So I need to rearrange that back wall so that my window is opened up and my side over here this this big huge table is kind of blocking the window and uh, so I've got to work some stuff out I need to work it into that cozy um, you know making it the you know I like the cottage type look my house is a little bungalow so it's kind of cottagey already and uh, yeah let's go back to this view that is very representative of my colors. I like it. Wow. So the pages in the book, I, I'm letting that background of the tablet dry. The pages in the book, uh, it's got a really bright, warm yellow cover. And I kind of like that. I'm going to take the yellow ochre and some of this kind of lemon yellow. I need to clean it off a little bit. It got a bit of blue on there. Very 5D. <laughs> I'm, you know, it's, I'm happy to, oh yeah, I like that. Get a little more yellow ochre. What the yellow ochre does is actually make it feel a little bit more um, rich. Oh yeah, that's a nice, nice rich color. So I'm going to put that on the cover. I'm not going to paint in that little triangle there because that's the underside of the cover. I curled the cover up. My choice, my, you know, my design choice. I wanted a little bit more movement 
this is a very static scene. The person just got up. Maybe they're, you know, going and grabbing their nice, warm, nice toasted bagel with some cream cheese or getting a, getting a scone with some butter and jam. Oh my gosh, I haven't eaten breakfast yet. <laughs> so I'm getting all kinds of ideas. <laughs> and, you know, there is kind of a, a color spot on here, kind of like a seal or something like that. I kind of like that. I think I'm going to make it into a heart, but it's going to be blurry. Maybe it's going to be the first of my doodling that I'm doing on the on the cover. I did that on wet paper. I'm going to let it just sort of blur out. There we go. Oh, and this is the number 12 round mimic creative mark watercolor brush comes in the set. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm I'm pretty hungry too. <laughs> Books and coffee and tea and yeah. Anything like that. I think the the pages inside actually have a bit of a tone. I'm going to go really, really white, uh, really, really wet on this. It was one of my shadowy colors and it's got a fairly crisp shadow inside. I'm going to say part of that is really crisp and part of it blurs out. Since that page is curled up, sort of that shadow, there's a little bit of texture on that page. Just put a bit of that in there. Since my page, my pages are lifted, I'm going to say that in underneath here is actually a shadow. I'm extrapolating the, those details out. The edge of this book is darker. It's actually about the same color as that, the darker part of that shadow. So I'm just, these colors I've already used in the painting, I can use them. And because I'm not painting super, super wet, I can go in and lay that shadow of the edge of that book. It's shadowed all the way down, isn't it? I'm just looking at these little details, making our cozy scene. And because we can actually see this back edge, I'm going to say that it is much darker. So I'm grabbing some sepia brown and Prussian blue color and I'm going to make a darker shadow on this this edge right here I'm leaving a little line of light I'm saying that there might be a little bit of reflection happening here I am going to darken up because I said I was going to do that darken up this glass bit. I'm going to leave some highlights. See now that dark color that was in there before isn't so dark, is it? When you start bumping up your contrast, the first colors that you put down can actually become mid-tones and highlights. I'm just taking some of that dark right along the edge of the book. This is a well-loved book. 
So I'm saying that maybe the pages have been warped a little bit from water. The person who, who draws in this book, they use a little watercolor. They're going in and doing some things that the paper wasn't rated to do. Kind of like I'm doing today. This is the Hanamule or Hanamul bamboo paper is 90% bamboo and 10% cotton. Um, they're not paying me. This is not a sponsored video or anything like that. This just happens to be the paper I'm using. And they did send it to me for free. So, but I'm, I'm telling you exactly how it's working for me. It is rated to use with watercolor, but in a limited way. I want to put a little bit darker shadow right in that edge. See, I'm just sort of working my shadows back. And that heart is a little bit bright. I'm going to go in with some of this and just sort of glaze over it. Oh, look at that. I'm just going to make that little heart. I'm going to doodle on the cover probably. Maybe. Maybe not. I think I am doodling on the cover here. This is doodling on the cover. Maybe there's a book plate. See, you can, you can doodle with a paintbrush. Doodle with a paintbrush. Arabella's heart for book, book art. Hello, Arabella's heart for book art. Look, I did a heart. <laughs> I did a heart on my book art. <laughs> That's fun. That's fun. So yeah, let's, let's celebrate all things cozy this month. Books and plants and sweet little animals. If you're interested in any of the designs, there's a link pinned at the top for this book. This is my cozy and creative hand-drawn designs. And let's see where we are. We started. Oh, and all I did was cut the pages in half and glue it on this edge. And I didn't glue it very strongly. It was just glued with some Mod Podge. So I need to get some padding compound. <laughs> you just subscribed. Thank you, Arabella. I appreciate that. Yeah, subscribe, guys, if you want to be in the know. There's, there's flowers, there's treats, there's Pop-Tarts, there's more wood, there's succulent plants, lots of cups, our Zen rocks. I love the Pop-Tarts. They're just so fun. Baskets of flowers. This one, so... During the live stream, there was a lot of other stuff going on. When I cleaned up this piece of artwork, I cleaned it up a lot in the computer and took out some extra bits just so that I can put, them, put some things in more crazy quilt style, more the rich Victorian colors and doodling with the metallics for like threads. So there's the... There's the one that was the cover. We've got warm knitwear and yummy treats. And, you know, all of these things are for my cozy place. There's like a cup of Japanese tea with a little periwinkle flower and a napkin. But then we have French press and um, British tea and macarons. So, yeah, we've got a little bit of everything you're interested oh this is kind of one of those designs that is cut off I did that because I'm going to put tape on my designs or you can put tape on your designs to give yourselves that margin see I just put tape around it I didn't draw all of the the bunny nightstand table that they're sitting on this was just left open 
not drawn. So there, I wanted to get that in so that you guys would know. I am feeling pretty good about this. I think maybe the floor could be a little bit darker. So now I'm just grabbing a little bit of the black and adding it into my my tone here and I'm going to say that the wall kind of runs parallel Oops. and the floor is darker. I'll darken up that leg. floor is a little bit darker. I know that there's something under the table. I'm not worried about the thing that was under the table. It's just going to fade off anyway. I am very illustrative with my, the way I do my artwork. Sometimes it's more detailed and sometimes the colors are kind of flat and not really detailed. Um, hot or cold press? Well, hot press paper. Give, now this is um, this is pretty much it is a pretty much a cold press type texture. It is a mixed media paper. But if I was when I go and buy paper, I buy cold press because generally cold press gives me more um oops see if you go in and work on this it lifts so your paint does lift on this paper uh generally cold press gives me more variety more version um more versatility the uh, many times if i want to draw on it and i'm not going to paint it i'll draw on the back side of cold press because it's usually slicker it's a, usually a little bit smoother like hot press and then on the front side, you've got that soft texture to it that grabs the grabs watercolor and gives you some of that texture that you that I happen to like. I need to get my shadows in on the cream and surprisingly, the shadows are very, very bluish. So I'm but I don't want it to be I don't want gray. So I don't want it to read as, you know, it's gray in there, but the shadows are kind of bluish. So I'm using some of that Prussian blue there. That's better. A little bit of Prussian blue. And I'm just going to put some shadows in there. There are some creamy colors, so I don't want to. And there's cinnamon. So. The cinnamon is going to get, we're going to take some sienna brown on here after we get the, the shadows kind of put in. And I'm just sort of dabbing shadows in. I'm not really being specific. This is a, just a cozy cup, cozy cup. There's, there's a darker space. Right down underneath. That's kind of like where maybe the coffee was or tea. Well, not tea, coffee or cocoa was coming up underneath over the edge of the cup. Or this has a dark stripe around the inside. That's, that's a possibility also. Just putting a little bit of detail in there. This is not... But look at that. We're getting You just you just purchased your copy of the book. Thank you, Joanne. Now, Joanne, did you know that my last name before I got married was Power? Did I already tell you that? I may have already told you that. But it was Power without it it was Power without the S. However, because there was an actress whose name was Stephanie Powers on Heart to Heart, 
with Ro Robert Wagner. I think he was her husband on the on the show. They very rich couple and all of this very jet setter, but they solved crimes. You know, one of those seventies seventies shows. Taking some of that brown tone up into my cream now. I'm just sort of working it, working a bit of a shadow. Not too much, just very lightly. I got teased a lot about my name. And uh, it's like just one of those things. We've got some deep shadow. We've got some higher shadow. We're going to get some of that sienna brown, which is not sienna brown, the uh, sepia brown, which is more like that, that cocoa color. So I'm going to put some cocoa color on top here. It looks like it's been sprinkled with cinnamon and cocoa. So cinnamon and cocoa. You love the, the Stabilo Carbathello? Carbathellos. Ooh, haven't tried that. You love mixed media trying watercolor this year. So you're so this is perfect. Oh well, excellent. Tara, that's that is so cool. Yeah, I'm going to be doing um a lot of different medias. So watercolor and gouache. I did get sent a set of gouache by a company that's on Amazon to try out. I don't know, you know, well, I mean, we can do it as a live try out. I'm just putting that first layer of cinnamon on there, sort of blurring it out. We'll make it a little bit darker. This is just, you know, my cozy place. Oh my gosh, let's just zoom out. I like that. You know, I don't need to do a lot more on that cinnamon. I think I'm going to darken up. I don't want to make it go green. There's quite a bit of that blue in there, but I want it to be a little bit darker. There we go. We're going to put in just a few little flecks. I'll zoom back in. Thank you, Shauna. Says it's so pretty. It's it's very, very sweet. It's very calming. This type of, of painting is, I mean, we're coloring. Having that loot, having that little outline book with all the little outline pictures just gives you a starting place. It feels like you don't have to come up with the entire design, but you can change it however you want to. And you can make it look as detailed or as simple as you want to also. I like that. I need a little bit of that cinnamon out there on the edge. Maybe a little more sepia. I mean, a little more um, not sepia. My brain just, sienna. It was like, not sepia. I'm just using the very tip of the brush and saying that the person was a little less heavy handed with their cinnamon sprinkles. Do you like to put cinnamon sprinkles on your tea or on your coffee? On your chai, certainly. Do you like to do that warming cinnamon Cinnamon is always such a cozy, cozy scent and flavor to me. A few little speckles on that edge. It looks nice and dusted. Yeah, at the top. And here, I can, I can even. I have it. Go on. There it is. <laughs> so I just dropped the link in there. I think I'm going to grab a pen. Let's see if I've... 
I want to grab one that I don't have to sit here and start. Okay, maybe I'm going to have to start. Sorry, guys. I'm going to have to do a little tapping and scratching. There we go. And dry. <laughs> You'll see me this evening? Oh, okay, Gina, have a lovely meeting. Uh, yeah, I, I am going to go live again at 6 p.m. tonight, Pacific time. So that'll be 9 p.m. Eastern time if people are up. It'll be, you know, mid-afternoon for my Australian friends. It'll be the middle of the night for my friends in India and um, Europe. But, you know... We try and, and get, I'm trying to get everybody covered here. <laughs> there we go. So, got this all dried off. I am going to do a little bit of doodling. I'm going to draw around that little heart. Maybe I'm going to do some... some little stripes on it. So this is where just go in with any pen. Once you're once you're sure you're done with your your um my brain just went dead. Once you're sure that you're done with your watercolor, you can use any pen. If you know that you want to go back in and do more watercolor, grab a pen that you know is going to work with uh, that's um, waterproof. This is the EcoPen. It's the company is EcoPen, and it is a cardboard tube with the pen core that goes in. It has a 0.38 inch tip, or 0.38 tip, and uh, that's the perfect size for me. It's not too thin and scratchy, but it's um, it's re a very fine tip, so I can go in and do some of these little doodly bits and just have fun it is one of my favorite it is actually my favorite pen and the ink is waterproof so when i drew the original on this paper it was with this pen so and it's totally waterproof which really makes me happy i'm just i'm just doodling now so putting in kind of a, a doodle diamond pattern i guess not really paying attention. I'm more talking while I'm doing this. If you are, you know, somebody who likes to talk and doodle at the phone, you know, when you're in your Zoom meetings, <laughs> these types of things are a lot of fun. I'm, it's, I'm making it look kind of like a crystal heart, aren't I? Oh, I like that. We're going to zoom in with the other view. So this is looking like a little crystal heart or a like a little doodle gem heart, huh? So I am zoomed in pretty far on that, so you see how that's looking like a little crystal crystal heart? I think. I'm going to go in and put just a couple little lines of maybe the this person is doing a mixed media journal and so they're they're putting some things on their cover so maybe they put a lovely little stick on heart little stick on gem So I've smeared across. I can go back in and draw right over the top of some of that white. Put a line through it. Makes it look like the that highlight is sort of breaking around the edges. Let's go ahead and put this the right side up again. And now my my reflections. It's interesting because on something like this, 
you would get reflections in really odd spaces. And then I'm going to say there's a little bit of a heavier shadow. I did a whole year of drawing gems, doodle gems, and things like that. So let's zoom. Oh, here, actually, I wanted on the little book plate, I was going to put that. And now you can rotate this so you don't have to draw your any words upside down. I'm going to put, uh, this has the title of Cozy. I don't do lettering. That is something that I am going to be practicing this, this year. So cozy book. This is my cozy book. I think I'm going to sign it right here next to the cup so it's not out. Whoops, sorry. I just signed it right here next to the cup so it's not out in the, just just down here on the edge of the paper. We're going to zoom out. We're going to focus. And we're going to pull the tape off because, you know, that's that's part of the fun. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the reference now. Oh, that little thing, that, that blurry thing right there, that's my phone that's recording this for Tangi so that I can have some fun artwork going up on my short form. So it will be a one minute video showing this fun painting. And I want you to see that I went ahead and... Oh yeah, and yeah, this paper really buckles. I'm going to spritz it with water and very lightly on the back and press it underneath of a couple books and it will flatten right out. Look at that. So I put the tape right over the edge. I wanted about a quarter inch margin around here. So, I, and I don't mind, I actually like how, see how it sticks out? into that black and white area. I think that's really cute. Oh, that is so fun, so cozy, ready to just sit down, have my cup of tea, cup of cocoa, cup of coffee, and just enjoy some me time and filling my, filling my creative cup up. I hope that you will join me later tonight for the second one. See, because I took the weekend off, I'm a little behind. So this is number two, and it is chocolate mint. So we've got our mint, we've got chocolates, we've got our mug and a cutting board. That's going to be a lot of fun. That will be this evening. Remember that all of the designs are coming from the Cozy and Creative Hand Drawn designs to print and color. This is a downloadable, instant download book. You buy it on my Teespring store. The link is down below and up in the iCard after the show and over in the chat. So if you like that, please, I'm trying to get my, by my mouse. There it is. If you like this, check out the book. If you want to draw your own, the iCard and down below also has the links for the original marathons. They are all time stamped, so you can slide across the, um, bring up the whole video. I know it looks scary. It says it's 12 hours long. Go across the timeline on the video, just slide it across and it will pop up the titles of each of the different drawings. It's really cool. And then I have the part two, which is the last six of the drawings. I had luckily been recording directly to my computer. So I was able 
to upload those because YouTube only archives the first 12 hours of a long stream. Yeah. What time tonight will be 6 p.m. Pacific time. And right after this show, after I get the iCards uh, set and the end card for this video, I will be going over and scheduling the next several videos. So tonight, 6 p.m. Pacific time. I would love to see you here. This made me so happy. And you guys are making me so happy also. Thank you for taking time to uh, give yourself some care. This is a month of cozy and self-care. So thank you so much. I am so grateful for you being here. Remember, go out and do something creative. Take care of yourself so you can take care of those around you. I want to see you back here again tonight.